Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to test and diagnose the engine when there is P0340 camshaft position sensor circuit fault code. So we're gonna see the camshaft sensor location. I will show you the wiring diagram for the sensor, how to test the wiring. And I'm gonna show you how to test the sensor output signal using the oscilloscope as well. First of all, this fault code is for intake camshaft position sensor. So here on this engine, we have intake camshaft position sensor here, and the other one is for the eggs now. So this fault code is coming for intake camshaft. So the possible causes for this fault could be, uh, first of all, the sensor connector. So you're gonna need to check the sensor connector first to make sure it's not loose. Disconnect the connector and check the pins as well. We don't want any sort of dirt or moisture inside the connector. If there is anything, just give it a good killing, put it back on, erase the code and check the car again. If connector is okay, we're gonna need to check the sensor itself. We need to inspect the wiring as well. We have three wires. The wiring could be the cause of this problem as well. ECM can cause this fault as well. But generally having the fault on ECM, it's not that much common. So we need to focus on sensor itself and the wiring. We go step by step to make sure if the sensor is okay and if the wiring is okay to find the main cause. So for the sensor itself, we don't have any resistance measurements. The only thing is to check the sensor visually, make sure it's not loose. We can take the sensor out as well to inspect it completely to make sure there is nothing wrong with the sensor. So I'm gonna remove the sensor right now. There is only one bolt holding the sensor and then we can take the sensor out carefully. All right, so this is our sensor. After removing the sensor, check it visually, make sure there is nothing wrong on the sensor itself. So we're gonna check this side of the sensor to make sure there is no crack or broken part. And of course, we're gonna need to check those three pins inside the sensor connector as well to make sure they are not broken or there is no moisture or dirt or corrosion on the pins as well. So this one looks perfect. So as I said, there is no internal resistance measurement on the sensor for checking the sensor operation. We're gonna need to check the sensor output signal or output waveform using oscilloscope that I'm gonna show you guys in this video. So I put the sensor back in. Now for the wiring, as you guys see on the screen, for intake camshaft we have three wires uh, pin number one is actually the camshaft sensor power supply which comes from the PCM and in this case the power supply for the camshaft sensor is 5 volt so basically when we check the camshaft sensor uh, power supply when ignition switch is on we should get 5 volts as you guys see the power supply for intake and exhaust camshaft is common coming from the PCM so it means if if there is anything wrong from the power supply provided by the PCM, you should have the fault code for both camshafts, intake and exhaust. So pin number two, the green wire, is actually the signal, and pin number three, uh, the brown wire, is actually the ground. So for the wiring on the sensor connector itself, as you see starting from the left, the gray wire is the power supply that we just discussed. The middle one, the green wire, is actually the signal or output from the sensor to ECM. And the last one, the brown wire over here, number three, is actually the ground. So right now we can inspect all those wires one by one. We're gonna need to use the multimeter for checking the power supply. We need to check the voltage between the gray wire and the body ground. So for that, I select voltage on my multimeter. I put the red crop on this pin, which is the gray wire, and the black one on a good ground. So as you see, I'm getting five volts. So this confirms that the power supply provided by the PCM is actually getting to the sensor and there is nothing wrong with that. So if you're not getting any voltage right now, you need to just 
check this wire all the way from here to ECM just to find the open or short circuit and get it fixed. For the other wires, for checking the sensor signal, the green wire, we can check the voltage between the green wire and the body ground as well. And when sensor is disconnected and of course engine is not running, we should measure 5 volts on this wire as well. So I'm going to do the same thing. Again, the middle wire is a signal, my red prop on the signal and black on the body ground. So as you see, I'm getting something close to 5 volt as well, which confirms the signal is okay. So again, like the other one, uh, if you are not getting any voltage, the signal wire, the green one between here and ECM uh, must be checked. For the last one for the ground, we can make sure this ground is provided as well for doing this. We can check the resistance between this ground and the body ground. So for that, I select the resistance. So the third wire on the right, the brown wire is the ground. So I check, I put one end of my multimeter over here and the other one on the body ground. So as you see, continuity is provided and resistance is okay as well. So it means this ground is provided as well. If this ground is not provided, again, you need to check this wire between here and PCM because this ground is provided through PCM. So if you are checking the wiring, as I said earlier, if any of those measurements is not accurate, you're going to focus on that wire to get it fixed. But if you are checking the wiring and your measurement is exactly what workshop manual tells you, the problem could be from the uh, sensor or from the PCM. But we are not sure yet because we still have the fault code. We check the wiring, there's nothing wrong on the wiring, but we still have the fault code. So what are we going to do? We need to check the sensor output signal using an oscilloscope to make sure if sensor is generating the waveform, if sensor is actually picking up the signal and sending it to the ECM. For checking that, we're going to need to use the oscilloscope. Let's go for checking the sensor output signal. Let's start measuring the waveform of intake camshaft sensor using oscilloscope. And as you see, I'm using launch oscilloscope, and this is the launch. Uh, scan tool to read the waveform. I'm gonna need to select the scope box over here. I have four channels on my oscilloscope. I'm using channel one. On the other end of my oscilloscope table, I have one prop for the signal. And as you see, I have already back prop the uh, green wire, the middle wire, which is the signal. So I'm gonna insert this one there. And ground as well. So here's the waveform. We're gonna need to do some adjustment to read the waveform properly. All right, the waveform is uh, the waveform is gonna change between zero to five. So I'm gonna adjust this one, the channel one to five, and I set the trigger to rise. So right now we can do some adjustment here as well to see more number of waveforms in actually one page. We can make the waveform taller as well from here. So as you see, this is the waveform from the intake camshaft. And this is a specification on the workshop manual for the waveform. As you see, the specification is exactly like what we are getting right now. So if you are getting a waveform like this square waveform, it means the sensor is okay and everything is fine. Sensor is working properly and the signal is generated as well. So right now we are reading the waveform on the sensor side just to confirm that ECM is receiving same signal and there is nothing affecting the signal on the signal line. You can take the measurement on ECM side as well. If you are checking on the ECM side and you are getting exact same waveform, it means the signal line is okay. But if waveform changes on ECM side, it means uh, the signal line is damaged. That's why it's affecting the signal on that wire. And that's exactly the reason for that class. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to visit the channel page for more diagnostic videos.